Hello and welcome to this episode of All Sem 1M. I'm Florence John Duo. This week we will be featuring the music industry in Papua New Guinea. We touch on copyright and the procedures involved in the approval of new songs for public consumption. a very powerful tool that can change and influence lives of people. We can say that the music industry in Papua New Guinea is a sleeping giant. Papua New Guinea's music talent is vast and is yet to be fully realized. To me it's a multi-million Kina industry, the music industry. Um, there was an estimate back, back in 2008. 2008 uh, it was estimated to be about 70 million Kina. Uh, pay in Papua New Guinea. Uh, I know one particular industry person didn't agree with that amount. Um, I'd like to think that it's a multi-million Kina industry in Papua New Guinea. If it's managed well, um, I'd like to think uh, it can generate uh, millions and millions of Kina every year for our uh, for the PNG economy. That, that's how much I see the, the PNG music industry within the wider entertainment industry. Reiterating how influential music can be is the chief sense of PNG, Mr. Stephen Mala. Music is very powerful. It can influence a lot of things. It can uh, also set the type of mindset our children will have. And because it is a very powerful tool, that's what we are trying to tell the artists that okay, let's be careful about what we are writing and singing about so that we don't pollute the mind of our young children. However, despite how powerful of a tool music is, the question of copyright has always been present. From independence in 1975 up until 2002, copyright law did not exist in PNG. We have a copyright law in Papua New Guinea. Um, and that copyright law is called the Copyright and Neighboring Rights Act 2000. It was passed by Parliament in the year 2000. Uh, however, it did not become law until 1st of July 2002. So we have had an act, a copyright law in force since 1st of July 2002. It's been, by 1st of July this year, it will have been in place for the last 15 years. Um, 16 years going. Uh, and um, prior to 2002, 1st of July 2002, we didn't have a copyright law uh, since independence. Despite having the Copyright and Neighboring Rights Act in place, this legislative has not been exercised fully in PNG. A law that is in place, however, it's ineffective because uh, we still have breaches of copyright and neighboring rights that are ongoing, not only online but within the country as well. Um, Maybe let me pause and say that EMTV, um, the television station that, is, that I am in now, is, is uh, one of the licenses of copyright. So uh, EMTV and PNG FM Limited in Papua New Guinea are the only two licenses that are licensed to use copyright works. Um, I notice uh, EMTV through one of its shows, um, Vocal Fusion, uh, featured one of my own songs, which is Crazy by Tarikana, uh, by the late John Wong. And I did pick up royalties uh, on the royalty statement. So yes, EMTV and PNGFM are the only licensed uh, users of copyright and neighboring rights in Papua New Guinea. Everybody else is not. Because of the bridges in this Copyright and Neighboring Rights Act, most Papua New Guinean artists, from writers and recording companies, are not compensated for their creativity and work like their counterparts in other parts of the world who are in the music industry. Lawyer and songwriter Oa Lamoy emphasized for Papua New Guineans to be good corporate citizens and do what is morally right when it comes to copyright. 
Well, it's just basic common sense. I mean, uh, intellectual property, uh, namely copyright, uh, basically property right. If it's not yours, get permission, pay a licensing fee, and be a good, good corporate citizen. Um, copyright is not as free as the air you and I breathe, the air we breathe. I mean, uh, obviously companies uh, with a moral conscience uh, would do the right thing by copyright and neighboring rights owners in Papua New Guinea, and that is to, um, to obtain licensing, um, because in Papua New Guinea we don't have that licensing framework under our law. Um, there, there's a number of us, just over 100 uh, individuals uh, who are from Papua New Guinea, uh, either living in Papua New Guinea or uh, overseas, um, who, because we don't have our uh, licensing system in Papua New Guinea, namely a collective management system in Papua New Guinea under our law, yet um, we have gone across to Australia to a, an entity called the Australasian Performing Right Association uh, Limited. Um, so we are members of that. I'm a member of that. Uh, so is Pati Doi, so is Demas Sol, so is Taita Maraga. Why, why are Papua New Guineans, we are from a sovereign nation, why do we have to rely on non-Papua New Guinean entity to, to process or, or to facilitate these copyright transactions uh, that is established by our own law. Um, why are we going to Australia? It's because we don't have it in Papua New Guinea. Um, and, and, and really, if you see, the government is really not doing its job. After the break, we talk about how content should be approved before it is broadcasted for public consumption. Content that is broadcasted for public consumption for entertainment has to be censored. In this case, new tracks produced must go through a process before it is considered appropriate for the public. Every one of us should understand that there are laws governing this. And, uh, it, is, it is a matter of uh, us complying with all the requirements as with films and songs and other materials. Under the censorship act, it is required to be deposited with us first. Once we are satisfied that uh, the content is, won't be offensive to anyone, then we allow them to uh, be broadcast or air, put on air. First thing, we look at the language, whether the language are appropriate, and uh, then we look at if it has sexual connotations or does it have anything uh, that will degrade women especially, or things that we think it's not appropriate to children to listen to? The Censorship Act of Papua New Guinea clearly states that any publications which include films, songs, or printed materials are subject to classifications and have to be approved by the chief censor. Under Pillar 6 of the Vision 2050, the government has directly tasked the censorship office to look at lyrics of all songs written to make certain it is good for public consumption. Lately, we are, we are stamping down on this because of uh, there's a lot of songs that have come out lately that we found that the lyrics are not appropriate. Back in, I think, early 90s, the censorship board gave... Uh, self-censoring to all the media outlets, broadcasting service, print media and all that. Uh, unfortunately, most of the, uh, let's say, production manager or whatever the title is, are not doing it properly. They are not following the rules. They are not following the uh, regulations in terms of the compliance. So I think what they should do, while, while we have given the opportunity or that privilege to all broadcasting service and media outlets to censor their own uh, articles and productions, it doesn't mean that they will just do what they want. They, are, they still have to abide by the regulation of censorship. Chief Censor Mala further emphasized that the recent ban on certain songs is not to penalize these artists, but to clean up the music industry and encourage artists to present their talent and creativity in a more decent manner. 
I'll just make something clear here first. Because they have all this freedom over the years that Sensitive have not stepped in to say, okay, let's clean up the industry. Now, this year that we, we took a step to try and uh, clean up the industry, everybody thinks that we are trying to penalize them. They think that we are discouraging the industry, music industry. We are not. If people really understand it, we are actually trying to help the music industry to say that, okay, you are professional artists, you love your music, but can we apply some level of decency into what you are singing about? So we are actually trying to help the artists and the music industry for that matter to uh, build up a good image for the industry. And I, I will confidently say that this, that the Office of Sensitive is here ready to help the industry grow, but we want it done properly. I think the important thing here is uh, like a lot of our artists now are very young at a very young age, about around 80, 20, early 20s. Uh, most of them, I think they are unemployed youths on the street. Uh, I know it is a uh, way for them to earn a living, but my advice to them would be if it is a way for you to earn a living, do it in a decent way. Do it properly. Do it professionally. Artists are classified as professionals. So I want them to portray that image. This is not about singing any, about any crabs on the streets. So that would be my advice to them, that if you want to succeed in the music industry and if you want to build a good image for the music industry that you are in, then let's do it properly. Let's do it with some decency. We continue after these short messages taking a look at how radio stations have new songs approved before airing it for public consumption. The old Sam one team also had the opportunity to talk to program officers or radio announcers from Kalang Advertising to see how new songs make it onto the airwaves. Uh, for the new music, what we do, um, we encourage our announcers to, like when they go on air, what they do, they, they make sure, like uh, our aim in, uh, as uh, Hot 97 FM, we aim to promote uh, upcoming PNG musical talent in Papua New Guinea. So when we go on there, we talk about uh, promoting PNG music and we ask the, um, the artists, the upcoming artists, if, they, if they're willing to share their musical talent or maybe they love making music, but they're wondering, okay, which, how should I go about to distribute my music and share my talent? That's when they come to the studio, drop their music. We have a form that they fill. So we don't charge them anything. All we have to do, just have them come over, drop the music. They filled out uh, uh, small papers uh, just to tell us a bit about the music, um, themselves, and, and uh, every little things that we need to know about the artists and the music. So we get them. Okay, the process, before we play them on there, what we do, we get the uh, music. We sit down, we have a listen to the music with our programs director and uh, we listen to the music and once when it's approved by them we, li we listen to the quality of the sound and uh, make sure they don't have any like uh, explicit language in them so we sit down we have a listen to all the songs the sound quality everything we go through them and after once it is approved by the uh, programs director that's when i come in to load the music into the system in the station itself for you it's usually one person who's responsible and loading music uh, and uh, in this case it would be me so usually when they bring the songs i have a listen through it and then depending on how i think about it and how uh, the feedback i get from the public is like 
that determines whether the song continues airplay or it's a one. According to this analysis observations, most songs are about women. Some are genuine, whilst others are degrading to some extent. I've been doing uh, radio here for six years, but radio as a whole been doing it for over 10 years now. Um, well, basically, I've seen the change in our local music happen uh, because since I'm a radio announcer, uh, you get to see it firsthand. So, yeah, I'd say, and I mean, I don't mean to, I don't mean to step on any toes here, but yeah, I think most songs are actually about women, and of course. Uh, some are genuine love songs, the others, majority I would say, probably got a lot to do with last songs. Most of the songs I've had so far, um, mostly, mostly the upcoming artist, most of the songs is, um, I'd say, it's mostly the singing about, uh, you know, girls and relationship and uh, problems that uh, people go through. The announcers also shared their views on the recent ban on certain songs by the censorship office. Well, I think uh, the censorship could have done this a long time ago and I kind of think it's a little bit unfair to a local artist as well um, in, in the sense that they weren't the guys that invented this approach to songs and approach to women through songs. They weren't the guys that invented this idea. Uh, we could blame it more on our Western culture that we have been influenced by because they've never put band on many of our, the international songs that we played. So if the censorship board could uh, censor what comes in, then that could control what's already in if they don't censor what's coming in from the outside, then you can censor what's inside, but still, like whether you like it or not, it's going to still happen. Like it can go underground, like what rap music did. So like what these guys we, whom we censor on media, they'll still release whatever they want to release, and it can be underground. They've got Facebook, they've got YouTube, they can still use that. It makes me think, you know, with the um, upcoming um what we have with the um, um, what's it, censorship uh, board, it would be nice if they work closely with the artists that you know help uh, stop uh, piracy in PNG and help those upcoming uh, Papua New Guinea talent to promote their music in a different level. Chief Censor Mala also had this to say to broadcasting houses in PNG. The radio station should do if they are given a new song or release from any artist, I think the proper thing to do is to tell them to come to us to get the clearance before they can put it on air. Let's think about the others. There are other people who are listening. There are children who are listening. There are adults who are listening. So whatever lyrics that we're putting into our song, let's make sure that it's acceptable by the public. A point was also made that the public can influence the type of music that is produced. It's up to us individual to choose what we want to listen to and what we don't want to listen to and just be real about it. And like, if you don't like it, I don't like it. Don't like it because the whole public likes it. Like it because you like it and that's it. Keep it at that. So that way you can encourage uh, the guys making music to know what the majority likes and it, because People do songs about lust and treating women in certain ways and the whole public likes it. That's why we have a lot of them being created because we encourage it to happen. And so the more we encourage it, the more we have it. After the break, we hear from Tats, a music producer and an artist and his view on the PNG music industry. Despite the fact that music in PNG is not bringing in compensation for artists, songwriters and music producers, 
They keep doing what they do best and that is produce music. It is high time the relevant responsible authorities work together to boost PNG's music industry. We spoke to a music producer and artist about the venues available for them. This is what he had to say. My question is what venues, you know? There's, there's nothing there, no one's doing anything. You know, like respect to the sports and all that, you know, all the money is going there, um, going into other stuff. How about music, you know? People, there's too much talent here in PNG, like it's not even funny. So much talent, but they have nowhere to go. They, there's, you know, we have to like um, make our own way. There's no sponsor here or there to try and help, you know? So if like there was some kind of like an, an avenue where we could get these kids out and like they could make it international for sure. But they just don't have anywhere to go. So, you know, after you've made a track and you get it on radio, what happens after that? Nothing. You just go back to the studio and make another track and then it's just the same cycle over and over again. You, you don't make it anywhere else, that's it. He also reiterated that the Copyright and Neighboring Rights Act in PNG is ineffective. Even like overseas, no matter how, how hard you try to lock it, you know, someone will always find a way to get to it. Like here in PNG, the law, it just, it's like it doesn't exist, you know, it's, it's invisible. People don't really care. I don't know, you could never make money of trying to sell CDs or, you know, it's non-existent, yeah, apparently. <laughs> were also made that most songs are about women and girls. Katz had this to say, stating that artists write according to their experiences and what the public wants. It's, it has been the thing for like for ages, a thing, it's been a thing for ages. It doesn't matter where you are in the world, someone's writing a song about a girl or a girl is writing a song about a guy. Or, like I guess um, people like to listen to that sort of you know stuff you know when they break they have a breakup and they want to listen to some depressing stuff or, or they're really happy and then listen to this stuff or i don't know like it's been around for ages like i don't know what to say about it like it's just there you know like you can have options like you can write about life you know so struggles that we're going through but i guess i guess it's just easy to write about it because when it comes from the heart it's easier you know what I mean? If you're, you've been through struggle most of your life, it'll be easier for you to just write about struggle. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess it's easy for people to just write about that. The power of music, music can change lives, man. It's, it's no joke. Like. An artist can, like, um, you know, like, an artist can just paint a picture in your mind without a paintbrush, you know, it's that, that powerful, you know, with just a couple of words, you can get, you can see a whole picture, like, that's how powerful music is, and, like, that's why I, I can't put it down, like, music, that's, that's all I do, that's, that's my life, music. We also took to the streets to get people's views on the types of songs released today. Splendid time, and we bless our time. Some old man says, Sing, sing, I like Dr. Glow side blow, Mary Blanty time. But some blow, I am good blow, but some blow, I am a blow, Philip Mosem. Hey, why no old says, Sing, sing, I put him all married as all go inside, and I dislike. He got the narrow blow away, we all but talk him, I put him some blow, something, we all look him as my interest, all to and put him go inside, and I come up him song blow, and all can sing him on all God. But all the time, me bless the feeling of the sample time where a song where me know is a one email or me blood to my side, blue Mary sample weddings. We all say you seem to him. Me bless the same click click because all man do so are him not this like I. So maybe all like you seem okay, sample weddings to him. All right, long and I mean, but 
Sometimes I say describe him all Mary na this like kain. All so pretty going inside na sing him too na. This like I'm sometimes me bless the feeling. Lo me them me feel him or say all man to stop na kain song come up and me bless say. Or say lo me me feel him or say I'm guilty like like. Those are some of the things that I have been having concern in my heart listening to radios. Songs that are coming on, most of the songs, it really destroys lives. People's life, young people's life, you know, they're still young, but by listening to the song, they're already destroyed. They're already destroyed. They're educated by those songs. So their mindset is being shaped up by the song. And that is why our artists today, it's very, very important for them. We, we, we want to thank you for their talents. We want to see many young people involved in, in, in music and all these things, so they do away with other things. But then, on the other side, the bad side of it is a bad impact that is happening in, right around the, you know, the nation. And so we just encourage them to do adjustment on the songs that they present and the, and the music and all these things. That's all for this week. Thank you to all who have participated in this episode. If you have any comments or stories you would like to share with us, please send us an email via the address now showing on your screen or visit our Old Someone and Facebook page. Until next week, I'm Florence John Duo, and on behalf of the entire Old Someone and team, thank you for watching and have a pleasant evening. Let the rest follow. Listen to me now. Let me.